Well, make a whole bunch of noise for Aaron Wolf. Aaron. So um, it's the fall of 1995. I'm in the woods behind the Hampshire College Library and Swim Complex. And me and my three friends, Rejects All, have finished the final touches on our log cabin. I had arrived at school about five weeks earlier amidst the sea of 400 freaked out freshmen. And the first thing I noticed is that all of them were unique and special and different. Um, in these like exactly the same way kind of way. Like they all had their identity and they all had their group. There were like the wealthy uh, jugglers and the Buddhist LARPers and you know the vegan socialists and they like all fit perfectly into these like perfect categories and I wanted to fit into those categories but I didn't because I had my own identity, one that was given to me. I am the older brother of the kid in the wheelchair. That's what happens when your brother has cerebral palsy. Every time you go out in the world, some like red-faced suburban dad gives you both this kind of look of like, oh, little buddy, sorry. And your brother gets to be the kid with cerebral palsy, but me, I just get to be other than. And the more times people identify you as other than, the more times that becomes your only identity. And so all of these like Buddhist LARPers look really appealing, but I was like, I am not like those kids. They are not like me at all. No one is like me. I am other. It's very lonely and very ne negative. And so I did what uh, anyone in my position would do. I found three other rejects and I built a cabin in the woods because <laughs> if, if we're, obviously if we're going to be isolated, we might as well be isolated. And it was awesome. I loved it. I'd wake up every morning. I'd go to the one class I could sit through, which was obviously Korean mask dance theater. Um, <laughs> That's why my parents were paying $40,000 a year. And then I'd go for 10 to 20 hours into the cabin and I'd sit and read and smoke weed and, and try to like forget that I was in college. And uh, then it started snowing. Winter in Western Massachusetts comes very quickly and it comes very hard. And like overnight it's freezing cold and there's a foot of snow on the ground. And we couldn't stay in the cabin for longer than a couple of minutes before it would get too cold. So my buddy Chris mentions that his parents have this old cast iron wood burning stove up in their house in Maine and it's eight hours up and eight hours back. But I do the math in my head, it's 16 hours to get this stove or a winter sitting in the dorm room lounge hanging out with Aubrey, the misogynistic lesbian who was the only lonelier person than me <laughs> on campus. And I, you know, so 16 hours later, we're unloading the stove and, and we're carrying it into the woods. And it's a hundred yards from this Hampshire College Library and Swim Complex, but the stove weighs 250 pounds. So we're carrying it like 10 feet at a time, and then we collapse and catch our breath, and we 10 feet, and we collapse. And finally, we get it into the cabin, and I, uh, we set it up in the middle of the, of, the, of the cabin, and I thread the chimney up through the roof. We made a little hole in the roof and loaded it up with some wood that was drying under the shelter, because if you're going to use 19th century technology, you have to think ahead. And I had thought ahead, because I'm a 19-year-old suburban you know, white kid, and I knew about 19th century technology. So we load it up, we light the fire, and it immediately the cabin is warm, and it's like everything is a glow in this orange glow. It's awesome, and we shed off our wet clothes and let it dry, and I'm thinking, you know, I've found the loophole. I've found a way to be at Hampshire without being at Hampshire. I had immunity. It was awesome. Uh, and it's snowing, it's dumping outside, and I'm thinking, this is it. I made it. And then the roof catches on fire. <laughs> Because like if you're going to use 19th century technology, you have to use forethought. And like we thought the snow on the roof would be okay and it would insulate it, but the wood, the the roof was made out of dry dead wood, and it was just like a tinder box. Just like it smoldered for like a second, and it was, poof, you know. And um, so like I snap into action. I pour water all over the chimney, thinking that'll cool it down, but it just erupts into steam. And so I'm blind, and we're all coughing, and kind of run out into the into the, the snowstorm and climb up on the roof and, and start dumping snow and mud and everything, trying to put out this fire. And like, again, 100 yards that way is civilization, and we're living out this like hobo nightmare. <laughs> and, I, and we're just desperately trying to get the fire out. And finally, after like an hour and a half, it's done and out. And we trudge back to the dorm room. And I'm covered in soot and snow and mud. And it's disgusting. And um, and all of us know that we're never going to light that stove on fire again. And I know that I'm going to spend the entire winter in the dormitory lounge watching Simpsons reruns with Aubrey the misogynistic lesbian, which is what I do. 
And uh, the first thaw comes, and we trudge out to the cabin, and all of the weight of the snow from the winter had collected on the top of the roof, and the support beams had broken, and the roof had caved in in a bunch of different places. And we kind of patched it up, but I, I, could, I knew in my heart of hearts that um, the damage was done. It would never survive another winter, and I also knew that the damage was done. I was not going to survive another semester at Hampshire College. Um, and so I called my dad up, and I packed my bags, and he picked me up and drove me home. And on the whole ride down, and actually for the next 10 years, I couldn't help shake this feeling that my identity of other than wasn't doing such a good job for me. Um, and it had started coming really clear to me that I wasn't making the kind of impression on the world that I wanted, and I wasn't going to survive Hampshire or anywhere with that kind of identity. And about a year ago, I'm at my friend's wedding, and I'm online at the buffet, and I strike up a conversation with his cousin. And... Uh, she says she's an admissions officer at Hampshire College. And I say, oh, ha, ha, ha. You know, I, uh, <laughs> and uh, just like that, I'm very suave on the buffet line at weddings. And uh, I, I, I say to her, you know, I tell her the story of the, of, of the, uh, of the cabin and the, and the fire and the stove. And she says, you know, we just lugged out an antique stove from the woods about a year ago. And that the cabin had, was still standing and it was like this uh, party place for freshmen for like the decade. And, and I'm like completely blown away. And then she smiles and looks at me and she goes, ha you're that kid. And she walks off. <laughs> and, and I don't know if she meant that I'm like one of those kids that comes to Hampshire and freaks out and builds a cabin in the woods and then drops out a semester later and then spends a decade trying to figure out what the fuck I'm supposed to do on this planet. Or if she literally just meant that I'm that kid that built that particular cabin. <laughs> but either way, I was totally fine with that identity. Thanks. <laughs> Aaron Wolf.